Hello again. Welcome to our Let's Play video blogcast thing. Uh, he's Gamma Dev. He's Ewak. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, this is going to be a little more disorganized than usual um, uh, because I got a whole bunch of things that I want to talk about. First of all, I was hoping to have um, uh, the Animatrix, the animation and art director for the game uh, with us, but um, she her schedule just simply didn't allow it. I'm going to cancel out of that. At, oops, hang on. So, so uh, we, we couldn't have her today, but I do have um, one nice thing to report is that I have been working on a GIMP plugin to load old 3DO cell files, and uh, it's working. And uh, let me just dig up my laptop here, and uh, I will key these in to uh to the video in post but uh hang on <laughs> yeah hang on <laughs> uh oh yes linux yeah but uh yeah so these these are actual a lot of these cells have been rotated back but um this is these are the actual uh pieces of artwork that uh were used in the game complete with transparency huh? complete with transparency that was an interesting thing about um the uh, 3DO is that there were two kinds of transparency. There was declared transparency and discovered transparency. Uh, basically, any source pixel that was 000, all black, was considered discovered transparent. And you could either have the cell engine skip that pixel entirely, i.e. leave the existing pixel in the frame buffer alone, uh, or, or you could write um, zero, zero, zero to the frame buffer, black, or one, zero, zero to the frame buffer, which is slightly red, so that if you had to read it back, it would not, it would not uh, interpret as uh, transparent again. Hmm. Um, so that was discovered transparency. Declared transparency is where you're able to use, it was a feature of the packer that, um, the, for the run length encoder, there were uh, four run length encoder states. There was a run of literal pixels, a run of identical pixels. Um, the, line is em the line is end of line. Basically, that's the end of the decoded line. And then a run of transparent pixels. So you could have 32 colors plus a transparent run. And if your paint program was intelligent enough to pick that apart, then you could... Uh, so you didn't have to waste one of your colors on... Uh, you didn't have to waste one of your colors on transparency, right. So, uh, so if your yeah paint program was so, uh, smart enough, and uh, so I'm going to go over some. So right now I'm showing uh, uh, Gamma Dev some of these wall textures that are really dark, yes. and uh, and uh, I'm I'm going to go over that <coughs> in a bit. Aha! Yes. Um, actually, so let is me, this why this is gray instead of black? Or <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, so some of the some of the cells that were used were really really dark. Um, and what happened was that, uh, during development, we're in the middle of development, we've already got like half the artwork done and I'm fiddling with the TV or so, and actually, no, because I'm, I was persnickety about this, my own television, I had adjusted the brightness and contrast such that black was black. It was, and everything else brighter than that, you could see, um, because that's, I mean, if you don't actually have a color colorimeter, that's one of the easier ways of doing it. It's just like, okay, turn it down until, like, okay, write zero and one right next to each other so that you can differentiate them, and then turn it down so that zero is black. Right. Okay. Well, well, okay. Yeah. That's... This brings up the question, though, okay, is zero, zero, zero on the 3DO actually black, or is it blacker than black? Don't know. I haven't looked at the signal levels. Uh -huh. um, it's it... probably blacker than black. I don't know. To, to, um... Well, no, I mean, that's, well, that's... Kind of what you're supposed to well, do. Well, yes, yeah, zero zero IRE is supposed to be black. I don't know if I I would I have faith that uh, Dave Needle got it right. Okay, so and everybody that, else gets it wrong. And so <laughs> I don't know that everyone else got it wrong, but I know he. I'm pretty. I like to think he got it right because he had he worked on the Amiga, and so right, he had right. enough. Uh, oh experience. yeah, so he's all used to gen locking and stuff. Yeah, so he's. Yeah, you he's, think you he, think some companies with huge experiences with video cameras and TVs, Sony, uh, would have gotten it right, and no, they never did. Uh, so, yeah, Con further contributing to the washed out look when a lot of titles went from 3DO to, to other platforms, where it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, what they say is 000 is not really what 
it's supposed to be video zero zero and zero. It's sort of it's yeah. It's kind of this adjusted upwards, so everything gets you know right and sixteen uh, shades yeah, it's, or whatever. Yeah, it's like from sixteen to two thirty two or something like yeah, that. So um, yeah, and there's a huge Wikipedia page about that and like black crush and uh, exactly and stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so so anyway, so I noticed that these things were coming out dark, and so I went over to all the uh, everyone else's TVs who were because they had machines to test on. And they had brightness and contrast cranked all the way up. Yeah. So it looked fine to them. So I readjusted everyone else's TVs, and they suddenly said, oh, my God, it's dark. And I said, yeah, I know. Your TVs were set too bright. And yeah. then I said, well, that means all our art is dark. And I went, yeah, it is. So you're... And they said, are we going to have to repaint it all? <laughs> and I said, that's one solution. <laughs> they said, oh, please, programmer, could you make us help? They could help us so that we don't have to repaint everything. So... If you see this gray cast in in like the borders and everything that everything is, that's me doing sort of a reverse gamma curve. That's uh, that's me kicking up the black so that the artwork you know the, yes. the would would actually be visible. Well, nowadays you would just do this in Photoshop and ba or batch it in Debabilizer and say, right. hey, we did everything wrong. Of course, you know you don't know if everybody did everything wrong or mm -hmm. people who had their monitors professionally calibrated like. A lot of the good senior artists will do, and mm -hmm. like say maybe a Kim mm -hmm. would have done. Uh, then I don't know. That, I don't know that color calibration really existed at that point, and certainly not for television sets. Because remember, the three D outputs only NTSC. True, but I mean that that's another thing you always come and come across is like you know you're supposed to say it's like well we can only guarantee what it's going to look like on our mm -hmm. device, and then we hope that the device does the right thing if we feed it what we just quote the correct color space uh right. in range of colors and all that stuff um yeah but you could have you know you could have come up with like the instead of like the disney wow disc you could have had like the 3do wow disc for home calibration let's see now that would have been like something you could have uh. sold for like 10 15 bucks is like an actual legitimate other than game use of the three 3 do that like, would have, we could have done that yeah there was, there enough, was like there was enough resolution in the clutch oh yeah you could have, have totally yeah. uh, put Patterns out, you know, should have hooked up with Mr. Joe Kane. So instead of people having to buy a hundred dollar laser disc, they could have bought a ten dollar 3DO disc <laughs> and a seven hundred dollar 3DO. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we'll have to talk about that too. Um, <laughs> are you going to get to play? Uh, but, gonna, get a, more... but there was another thing I wanted to, to show you, and I'm going to key this in on, on the video and post. If you remember from our last episode, I died at the end. Yes. Um, so the yeah. So <laughs> the only way you can see um, Les's uh, little thing is that if you actually complete it. So I'm going to key in the completion, the completion, uh, and so you people at home can watch it. And I'm going to show this so that you can hear Les talk about uh, you know the end of the level. Ghosts and ghouls and trespassing fools, a house of haunts awaits. Take steps with care and always beware, you could be zombie bait. Okay, so there's, there's Les's uh, admonition at the end of uh, level five. And so now, pick up the controller. Wow, so there's a different one for every level? How did you find space for all that? <laughs> uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, <laughs> How full was the disc? I mean... Oh. Remember, um, easily the largest asset was audio, because there was no such thing as MP3 at that time. The best you right. could do was a weird AIFC, compressed AIFF, right. which got you about fifty percent reduction. Right. Um, and so, so let's uh, let's load the game up here. Bing. But yes, it's uh... no. Do we get new wallpaper? Uh, no, no, no. But we do get new. Do we get any new enemies or different enemies? Uh, or? Well, we different. Uh, we get a different combo of enemies. So ah, okay. We did. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So pick a direction, any direction. What does this look like? He chose poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, you jerk. <laughs> Uh, now you can say, well, I know there's a. Well, it's nice that you know that there's at least a door coming up. On the other, on which one? There's other doors beside them. Oh, which one? Which way you want to go? North, south, east, or west? I thought you knew these like the back of your hand. <laughs> I, thought, I did twenty years ago. Where? Well, I, don't, I don't know. All right, we'll go, go for it. Not shooting. Well, that pretty much establishes that you can't shoot through doors. 
Hello. It's kind of nasty to make the player like make a choice that he could potentially screw himself over on. I mean, but then again, replay value. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh. Am no. I running out of keys? Probably. Ah. I guess you gotta go this way. No. I guess not. Oh my god. Did Are you sh actually pick the wrong. <laughs> no, I picked up both keys. Now, see, that would have been a great situation for Les to suddenly chime in and it's like, oh, run out of keys? Well, you're, you're okay, totally yeah, screwed. No, totally... <laughs> That's it. No, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I thought we play tested these. I thought I thought it was impossible to make a bad decision. It was impo It was impo I thought we set it up right so it away. was impossible. Yeah, was, I'm not missing something, am I? We go. Well, it's, you know, it has to be in the dead center. It's not like it's hiding in the corner or somewhere, no. or it's. Uh... Okay, and that's not a slot. Right. Huh. All right, we have to restart the map. <laughs> See, I don't, see, that would have been a great... Uh, Jeez. Do you have, did you have QA on this? We, well, we did. Um, well, I mean, to the extent... We, we played them ourselves. Ah, well, I don't know that, see, we, that would I, be we cool. didn't, I don't know we had anybody who was, like, focused on... Breaking um, the game? Breaking the game. Yeah, see, that you've got to have those because, you know, if you write any software, be it game or commercial software, hand it to somebody who's not you, and immediately they will say, well, why would he ever do that? Well, because they can, and they will, and they want to. Which way did you go last time? Because well, I went north last time. So... Yeah, so we won't go north this time. Let's go east. Uh, I, I'm i surprised, because I did a once-over. Uh, this is especially true in map 10. I believe I'm remembering. Now, see, this would be the great way to, like... Uh, it would be nice to be able to carry keys between levels or spend some of that, uh, that bling mm -hmm. that you're picking up for no apparent reason. <laughs> Because it's like, maybe they would, the ghosts wouldn't attack me if I'd stopped stealing their treasure that they have left around. It's like the cursed coins from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Uh, I don't trust any of these. Because <laughs> well, I, 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 I thought I had done a once-over on all the maps. Is that? Yeah, okay. Do I have one extra key? Just the one. Uh, I'd done a once-over on the maps to make sure that the key count looked reasonable that there was a chance you know that, that there wasn't going to be hello there well for there's ghosts fine. there must be keys and spiders oh crap I freaking hate these things jump up there you go hopefully there's nothing behind me come on the other spiders Ah, okay. Just a pile of bones. And him. Yeah, no, it's because I keep harshing on level 10 because I remember, I mean, it may not be level 10, it might be another one. Um, it's one of the catacomb levels. Uh, I'd, I'd done a once over uh, to make sure that it looked like the key count was. Uh, there, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a way that you could run out of keys. That. Ah. That, but uh, apparently not. There we go. That one, uh, what was it? Uh, ah, that one screech, which sounds v vaguely like a velociraptor that occasionally pops up in this level. Um, but mm -hmm. you, you hear it like every like, you know, 20 or 30 seconds in here. It's like, it must be a very popular one because I remember I've heard it in Slayer. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to know like what it act, what the sound actually is. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure it's part of some famous sound effects library. I'm pretty sure. In fact, I think the soundtrack to this particular map is um, from a sound effects library that we. Three Dios, the one that they gave with the dev kits, or I a different. I don't one? know about that. Because uh, they they had a nice. I mean, pretty much all of like Twisted was made with like that uh, that huh. built in that that one that they just gave to developers, like that huge content library that they gave to developers, saying, "Here, you can use all this stuff, you know, royalty free." It's part of the dev kit. It was like a whole bunch of sound effects, a bunch of video clips, like all those like black and white movies that show up in. Uh, oh, is this like the pr the uh, precursor to the Prelinger archive? All I, that stuff. I, I guess, but it was like one of those sort of like. It, unfortunately, it was sort of almost like a your your at home shovelware kit uh, was yeah. kind of part of it, but it's basically like they took 
I don't know if they just went to like the Library of Congress or whatever, and they found like all the public domain videos they could and just threw them on there. But again, kids before the internet, or for at least the World Wide Web, um, mm -hmm. the internet back in those days was uh, ah. news groups that yes. you subscribed to and download and read text and either had to have a really good service provider who, who, who you, carried all the groups. Yeah. Or you had to belong to a university. Yeah. Mm. Or a business or read them at work. Back in those days, reading, you know, hooking on hogging on the internet at work was frowned upon. <laughs> Even more so than today. <laughs> Now this week, are we, uh, you got one key. Uh, yeah, the one I the most, one I most recently picked up. Uh, oh, there you I go. Have two, two keys. All right, nice. now I'm lost. Thank you, Count. <laughs> um, All right. It's very appropriate. We're getting close to Halloween. Like I said, this is like uh, the penultimate uh, Halloween game for the 3DO. Because there aren't many. I mean, this is like. I guess, how many horror games are there on the 3 do I guess you got this, you have D, you have uh, D, yeah, D Alone in dinner. the Dark. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... Um, although it's D's Diner is the way it's actually spelled. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, it doesn't um, Killing Time count? Yeah, I guess. Um, of course, well. Um, I was trying to think, what other horror tiles are there on? Like, what do you want to play around Halloween? The 3DO. It's like this is high on the list. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Extra guy. And okay, so it was uh, yes. And there's now this week I was um, I was you know because of YouTube and you know Google spying on you that it recommends videos for you you know uh -huh, uh, yeah. as you as you click on things. Right. And one was another so-called you know retro review mm -hmm. and. Generally, I don't just you know watch them, uh, but I, the summary, the, the first sentence of the, of the summary, is is one of those just like it grabbed my attention up because it was so bad. Um, it was, <laughs> it was about uh, Goldeneye. Ah. Uh, and N sixty four. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh. That's that's. I think that's. I don't think they ever made like any like the claim never got that license, so there's no side scroll or anything for it. But uh, yeah, and it was like. The, the, the very first sentence, and I just, it was like, God, oh, it was wrong in so many levels, uh, was, uh, court, despite what popular opinion is, Halo was not the first console first-person shooter. Goldeneye was. It's like, what? okay, yeah, first of all, that's not a popular opinion. I mean, yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're 12, maybe you think Halo <laughs> is the first console first-person shooter, but certainly Goldeneye isn't either. <laughs> It's not even the first one on the N64. Uh, you know, there was Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, you know, all that stuff. I mean, Goldeneye just gets mentioned because it was like the first one that didn't completely suck. Um, in terms, <laughs> <laughs> at least on the N64. But then I got to thinking, it's like, here's something we never discussed on this. It's like, I think this is actually the first console first person shooter. Well, think it would have to. Okay, what would be out before this that was a console first person shooter? Uh. Because, like, okay, what console could have run one before this came out? That's so, a... so, remember, we know... Uh, now, unless somebody did a... So, somebody might have done a port of uh, Castle Wolfenstein to the Super Nintendo or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. It was Super Nintendo. With the FX chip, I thought Dune was, like, the first one. I'm not sure you could have gotten... But even, you know, that was still would have been a port. I don't think mm -hmm. anybody tried to do a console first-person shooter until this. Now, I'm sure somebody right now is on the internet uh, yeah. you know, rapidly the internet typing. Yeah. yeah, furiously typing. But I'm trying to think. It's like, okay, you know, it would maybe they could do a Wolfenstein um, sort of clone on the SNES, maybe the Genesis. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know that that was a big deal when, on the Amiga, um, right. that they couldn't really do a, a, do a, a Wolfenstein clone effectively because of the, uh, the, the way the the frame buffers on the Amiga it's, right. it's the planar, planar versus chunky pixel right. problem the f yeah the, 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 the fill rate just wasn't there and so this actually might be the and of course that's Amiga that's a computer right. um, so I was thinking it's like, could something come out like this I can't remember if the CD32 launch 
Uh, it was see, like the same month as this, wasn't it? It was like uh, a month. Pretty close. Yeah. It was pretty close. Oh, so, hey there. And even that was... Although that, that actually... The CE2, I think, did have the chunky to planar conversion chip, which I don't think if anybody ever bothered to use. Um, I don't again, think somebody will be me. correcting me. Or, or, yeah. It was like... That was their plan for it. was like, hey, this will solve our problem. But the performance was still an issue because mm -hmm. it's it's an A600. It's, uh, you know, it's a 6... Was it a 68... 20 or something in the might point. have been an 020 I don't remember yeah it, I wasn't I wasn't um, so I didn't, I didn't work on this CD32 I mean, so this would have been like the first thing that actually had you know enough power to do one and then this is definitely the first con first person shooter on the 3DO unless you count uh, Jurassic Park no that's not a that section well uh, yeah I guess okay so it would be a first person shooter because you can't shoot um, so it's First person first runner, runner I guess. run away, yeah. So first person panic. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know there are, there are some you know Atari twenty six hundred games that sort of are third per first person shooters, but they're like well, they're I not know, like this. Yeah. So. I, well, I know that somebody um, managed to port Doom to the twenty six hundred like relatively recently, like in the last five years. Uh, well, I thought that was a joke. It was no. It's, it, I I played it for a few seconds. Okay. I said, uh, "Oh, it's basically sort of like a tech demo." Yes, it could have been done provided you had unlimited memory. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you can also do full motion video on the twenty six hundred if you have unlimited memory. I mean, yeah. Oh boy. Hello. But yeah, it's like this might oh. be. You know, I mean, there are ones where it's like you know they're just discrete step fixed. You know, mm -hmm. you can turn ninety degrees at a time and go forward one square. Oh, yeah, maze war kind of thing. Yeah, there's stuff like that, but. You know, what you would think of as like the Wolfenstein, you know, classic first person shooter, Doom mm -hmm. style. I think this this is definitely in the running for, you know. Wow, that would that would be amazing. Yeah. Because so, I certainly didn't think of it as like the f first of its kind of any kind. You know, because we were, as I said, we were ripping off Wolfenstein. Well, yeah. This is a PC game. Um, well, here, let me, Man. Let me consult. <laughs> I don't know if you could look that kind of thing up on... Oh, Mobi hey, Game. I found the boss. Hello. Are you going to shoot him? I'm just going to wait. Like, yeah, let him excited. stab you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, look, we have two bosses on this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't do that. Hey, look. You go through this door, there's another whole level twice as big. Oh, no. <laughs> How'd that get in there? Yeah. Are we going to be greedy again and end up like, oops, I forgot all about the, the spider in the corner. And... <laughs> well, oh, you, oh, you don't have the talisman. Is. Okay, so you don't, yeah. have, you don't have the talisman. No. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, wait a minute. Let me look at that again. Let me see. Like, when was Wolfenstein? Gee, what the hell? Okay, so I'll have to go over here. Okay, where is Wolfenstein? No, I just came from that way. Jeez. Let me see. Like, where is Wolfenstein? There was a port of <laughs> Where's Carmen San Diego? I don't know. <laughs> there was a port of Wolfenstein. I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure somebody would say, "Oh, there was this obscure Japanese title that was meant to be like Wolfenstein, but all the walls were solid color or something, and ran at three frames a second. I don't know. Oh wait, so <laughs> earliest Wolfenstein, 1981. That's uh, the original Castle of Wolfenstein, not Wolfenstein 3D. Oh, yeah, Wolf, yeah, Wolfenstein was published for the Apple II. So let's see, Wolfenstein. Just awesome. 3D. Hey, that's the 3D version. Uh, oh my God, where'd you guys come from? Acorn. So there was a version of Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, let's see, for no. Uh, yeah, those were all in '94. It was a Wolfenstein VCS for the Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. um, you sure there was a Doom for the 2600? Wolfenstein I could buy. Well, no, mm -hmm. not published. It was. It was a. No, I, I'm sure this is also. This is also a, just a. Oh, haha! <laughs> funny. The Wolfenstein VCS is a modified version of the game Venture. It's like they uh. mean they mean classic Wolfenstein on the Apple. Uh, or okay. is Wolfenstein's 3D? It was that wonderful game with did the first. I think it's like one of the first. Computer games with digitized speech, you know. Oh yeah, on, on our spies. Hi, you know. <laughs> and then they could, that was all the, the speech they could afford, so they just kept pitching it up and down. Mm -hmm. It all spies. Huh? <laughs> I'm 
Jeez, do I have to read? Schreiner. Yeah. yeah. No, it's no. It was no. It, it was. I played it on the on the Apple too. It was. It was really. It was a really tough game. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then there's Beyond Castle of Wolfenstein 3D. Mm-hmm. That even ended up as a. I remember that was like a question that ended up on. Was that one versus a hundred? On. Uh, oh really? On. Uh, on sorry. On the Xbox version. Oh, the, the, okay. The, crowd participation yeah. version it was yes. sort of like and it was like trick question it was like which of the it was like one of these and it was oh, listing well. like all the uh, the different versions and it was, it was something about like what I must I must say if it was that one like which of these was it was it was something we were scared and, like nobody got the question right it was like oh it took them all out yeah oh wow and it was like oh and I was like oh god dang <laughs> I knew that one because <laughs> I'd actually that was actually the version I'd played it was uh Beyond, I never got the, the first one, but uh, yeah, people say well, Wolfenstein, like it, it's called Wolfenstein 3D because there already was a Wolfenstein. Yes, it was a big thing to make everything in 3D, like Titanic 3D. Yes, kids, there was a Titanic before there was a 3D. Aha! Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Sometimes adding 3D is not the best thing. No, but in that case, Wolfenstein was. I wonder who, I, well, and I know who wrote the original Wolfenstein. It's like I wonder if if he, the the actual original author had the rights to that one day and got any kind of residuals out of that, versus the the publisher just said, "Hey, we have this license in our in our catalog," because I that would be a, an awesome payday to get, you know, something like, yeah. Oh, hello there. Sort of like uh, like the Prince of Persia game, you know. They they later said, "Hey, let's make Prince of Persia 3D." I you know? <laughs> wonder if Jordan Mechner was saying at that time, you know, hey, that, that might work out for me the same way that uh, <laughs> worked out for Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, hi guys. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Is the ghost gonna follow? Yeah. So you should have like a. So do you? So there's just. So the boss only guards the entrance or pretty, the, the well, exit. That's, that's pretty much where we placed him. Yeah, is, yeah. is at the exit. So there's no like special one near the amulet. Um, actually, I think in um, the first, uh, the, 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 the what is it called? Um, the, the 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 hotel level, you might say. Um, he was guarding the the amulet. But I mean, there's not like a a mini boss guarding the amulet no. or something. No. Like that. No, there's only one class. There's only one class of boss that takes like you know ten shot, eight or ten shots to take him out. Okay, now as I remember, there's a guy. I thought I saw a guy floating on the ceiling. There's a spider here. Yeah, yeah. Nothing here, just a hanging lantern. <laughs> just a green lantern. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, jeez. Fast. Yes. Now we now we don't want to. Uh... Well, no, I never thought of it. Ah, jeez. Boing. I don't know what you know, what what uh, marketing you had at that point. Marketing? If, if they oh. would have uh, noticed that, say, hey. Of course, you'd have to actually have marketing. Though, so. <laughs> First person shooter. Well, it was uh, that was EA's responsibility. EA was it was the publisher, and um... yeah, that was kind of weird. Uh, that so that was was that the only game developed at NTG that was 3D or um, EA published? Yes. Before they all turned into studio published. That's correct. Was Twist, Twisted was also published by EA, wasn't it? I believe it was. Yes. Yeah. There was. I think there was one other title, and I'm out of shots. So I don't know. Do oh. <laughs> okay. Now we've got four more. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. Um, there was th- I, for some reason, I'm remembering like there being one other title that was published by EA. Because uh, Jurassic Park Interactive, that was done by Universal because they had right. the license. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they didn't have the license, they had the copyright. I mean, <laughs> well, no, I mean, no, I mean, it's their license, it's a Universal movie. So. Right, it was their movie, so. Yeah. They said, hey, you guys. Okay, there's nothing here. Um, so I mean, they had to be, and I don't know if that was their. Was that their foray into game publishing? Was that? I think Universal so. Universal Interactive, you know. I think so. I think it was one of their earliest. They also wanted to do a. Um, 
Universal Space Station or something. They had this kooky idea for a, Space Station a or? role playing game or Universal Orbiter. Well, there was that that didn't do with like World Builders Inc. Did it? That was like the famous one that showed up on the sampler disc and in the catalog that never mm. no one ever saw anything but those screenshots and we were just wondering it's like well what became of that? It's like one of those. Is there people thinking there's like some awesome prototype out there somewhere? Of no. The game was in. But uh, yeah, I mean. Well, I mean, did we talk about the, uh, the the original plan for the launch title of being Jurassic Park versus perhaps this versus Crash and Burn? Because it's kind of odd that Crash and Burn was the, the pack-in title for the game. Well, I th- 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 think they were in the pack-in because they were the only one who was done. Well. Um, in fact, Kim reminded me, we had a song that we used to sing uh, about when we were right about this game. Um, which is based on uh, the famous song from Ren and Stimpy. It says, it's game, it's game, it's, f- it, oh, wait, how, how do you go? It's game, it's game, it's big, it's heavy, it's fun. It's game, it's game, it's better than great. It's done! Yeah, might not, we're not saying that too closely, or the YouTube will like say, this is a claim by uh, yeah, Viacom. Yeah. Uh, you hummed our tune. Yes. Okay. I got to silence the music. Huh? Yeah, they need to... They need to get away from those guys. There's no such thing as a bot that can identify infringement. It's amazing. I don't know. You? Shazam's pretty good at picking up uh, stuff that you hum and figure out like what song this is. So, haven't you ever used that Shazam and Sound Soundhound or whatever? It's like you can just hum the tune and it actually will get the tune. Oh, Trying to identify the, it. Uh, yeah. That's. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Well, well, see, it's fine as long as it's like, what's that song, you know? It's like a good, uh, 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 uh. It's about half of them that are written yeah. in the last five years. Well, that's the trick. It's like, like, what is the, what's the essence of the song that you can digitize and catalog and turn into a number, you know? It's like, but, uh, I think and then have one shot left. I have one shot left. So, ah, crap. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. This is gonna no be no cheat long codes one. for you, Mister. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's no logs that you can't edit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. This is this is the non-linear digital editing age, man. I mean, come on. You've been doing that since like the mid '80s. Thank you, Mister Lucas and uh, Edit Droid. Edit Droid, yeah. yeah. Hi guys. Well, do you need, you need to remember which door to open now, right? So yeah, you know no, where, so you know where the tal- you know the exit is. Right, so you, so you I need think, to go for the talisman. Right? right. So yeah, now I'm heading south. At least I think I'm heading south. Yes. What? But so so was the original plan for the pack-in to be? Um, can I say the name of it? I don't know. Can you say the name of it? Planet Hopper. Um, that um, I, I believe that was. The plan. The, the plan. Yes. Until let's, let's have a platformer like a certain other platforms, and uh, let's yeah. have a mascot out of it. Yeah. Know, that's something that was, like that. That was, that was um, the hope. And, and the uh, breakfast cereal, and <laughs> the toy were, line, and all that stuff. I don't know that we were looking at two breakfast cereals and toy lines at that point, but. Um, And so, okay, now, Scary level. so I've heard, a, I've actually not seen anything of Planet Hopper, and I've only heard a little bit from you and a, mm-hmm. and a few other people. Um, so was this going to be a full 3D platformer, or was it going to be kind of like um, what we think of like new Super Mario Brothers, where it's sort of like, it's it's a side-scroller, but there's 3D planes to it, sort of, or like it's, Little Big Planet or something like that? It, well, I haven't played Little Big Planet, but um, oh, it was probably most closely... Um, yeah, but yeah, sort of. It was sort of going to be side scrolly with depth, um, in that you could move in and out as well. Uh, so it was going to be a fixed perspective. Okay. Um, I mean, more like a basically like a side Crash Bandicoot kind of thing. Um, yeah, a little bit like that. Although it was going to be more. I was still thinking in terms of you know rectilinear spaces rather than the more organic structure structures that Crash Bandicoot had. Um, oh, it's very cube based, uh, and uh, you know, and I crash. Mean, well, I'm remembering some of the uh, the levels where you had to run from the uh, boulder down the hill. Yeah, 
But I mean, it's basically a tunnel. I mean, it's a, you know, it's 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 a trough that you're in. Uh -huh. You know, and it's very tile. It's very three D tile based. I mean, well, well, here's one. Th I don't know if you, you 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 know this, don't you? That Crash Bandicoot started life as a three D title. I was dimly aware of that because Mark Cerny was working on it, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. So that that's that weird thing. Um, that's. Because Way of the Warrior, I know the much maligned uh, 3DO fighting game, mm -hmm. was made by the two guys who uh, started Naughty Dog. Yes. That was their first title. That was their first title. And, uh, and, and, and it shows uh, because they... And I don't that's they did actually, a credible that, job no, for a couple it's of guys. Like, I, know it, I know it gets much maligned, and uh -huh. the reason it gets much maligned is um, they they did something... Re they're, they're huge fighting game fans. Mm -hmm. And they also talked on the, the internet, the Usenet news groups mm -hmm. while it was in development because right. that it was it had been shown at trade shows and it shown up on demo disc and they were huge fighting fans so they were talking actively about it and they were talking about all the stuff they were doing for it and graphic wise it's it's very good mm -hmm. um they couldn't afford they wanted to use the digitized actor because mortal Kombat was big at the time mm -hmm. and but they could only basically afford their friends and right. they literally shot this i think were they still in college they might have done this in the dorm room uh, they literally had to like open their front door, stand out in the hall because they didn't have the space. Shoot uh -huh. in from the open door. Fantastic. So they, yeah, and so it's you know, it's you know, it's amazing that it turned out as well as it did. But I mean, the other problem with that game is it's like it looks like Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. it looks a lot better than Mortal Kombat One. It's actually got you know 3D stages in mm -hmm. it. Um, and they have a zillion features, but the gameplay is not like Mortal Kombat. It is the gameplay they were trying to emulate was Street Fighter. Hmm. And Street Fighter is a very fast, timing-based, ah. kind of twitchy kind of thing, uh, where it's like you have to hit like you know your moves on a precise frame, you know. Oh wow! And there are hit detection boxes and all this stuff. Mortal Kombat is more of a much. I'm gonna get. Slam. Hate mail for this, yeah. um, but the you know uh, what's his name Jason Tobias admits this how it works is like there's literally it's it's more of a state machine a very mm -hmm. simple state machine in the sense of there's only like um, a relatively small number of places on the screen where your character can stand uh -huh. like if you jump you mm -hmm. jump to one of these predefined spots if uh, you okay. walk forward you have to walk a full step forward there's no like sliding around kind of like in Street Fighter where it's like it's more of like a digital world. Digital uh, in the sense of, you know, there's very discreet places that things right. can happen. Quant very because they Because they, yeah, because they have a, their engine is based on, like, um, you know, paired encounters where it's like, this if this guy is doing this guy, this, and this guy is doing this, he can counter this. and it's very, mm -hmm. So the outcomes are relatively uh, well known and defined. Whereas Street Fighter is all about, did my fist happen to hit his vulnerable box, hit detection box, mm -hmm. you know? That he had at this spot. And that's what uh, Way of the Warrior is trying to do. Ah. And so people who like Street Fighter immediately look at it and go, ugh, Mortal Kombat. Uh -huh. And they say, you know, because those, those two camps have very different uh, ideas of what a, quote, true fighting game is. You know, one is like, ah, oh, it's all about, you know, the fatalities and those graphics, or, you know, there's no skill involved in it. And the other guy is sort of like, oh, it's all spazzy, you're just mashing buttons real fast and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Whereas, whereas Mortal Kombat's a little bit slower, at least in the first couple mm -hmm. um because remember this was made around the time i think they started that game probably when it was like maybe between one and two that they started that game um like maybe two had just come out when they'd started it so they're looking at mortal kombat one when they were doing that so it's a it's an impressive game for a couple of college kids yeah and i mean the the thing that kind of belies you know kind of covered up the fact that it was really just a couple of college kids it's like was when universal picked it up and they said hey People what would you it. like for music on this thing? And, like, and they just kind of probably jokingly said, yeah, can you get some white zombie? Sure. No problem. It's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> if you're going to spend money on that, could we have, could we go back and, you know, reshoot, you know, do a some couple actual... days of, you know, shooting actors and stuff, for re, you know, redoing the graphics for the fighters, you know, like have an actual shoot of that, you know, professional shoot of that. Have a mocap studio? I yeah. Okay, you got and because it probably would have, you know, a little bit of extra polish on... It's sort of just the fighters that are kind of like... The one thing is cheesy. Because, um, you know... 
I still, I mean, the, the voices just make me laugh, and so they kind of just went with it. How does that feel? You know, it was like, you know, like, uh, what's his name, the Australian Shaky Jake? No, I, you know, I, you know, it's like, it's the worst <laughs> oh, man. American doing an Australian accent. And I think it even might, it might be one of the actual two founders is doing, like, probably like half the voices are like that, are just those two guys doing it, so it's impressive. And so when it did, when that game didn't sell well on the 3DO, if, mm-hmm. if, if it sold like gangbusters on the 3DO, you could have bet that they probably would have continued, and 3DO, of course, was doing better. They probably would have continued with Crash on the hmm. 3DO. It does, it's, same, it's like the exact same story with Disruptor, and the common thing they have thing they have in common is Universal Interactive bought, uh, essentially, uh, not bought both developers, but basically in the publisher of both developers, both uh, Insomniac. Because mm-hmm. when Insomniac, you know, they're, after Disruptor kind of, you know, came out late because it had, been, it had to be reported from the 3DO to the PlayStation. Right. It was kind of like after there had been a zillion first-person shooters on the PlayStation. Mm. And theirs was, theirs was very good. It was a very good one. And Although that one, had, and that was another case of Universal giving them a, a huge production budget mm-hmm. at kind of after the game had been finished. So that one was full of like full motion video. Oh, wow. Done with, I think, and one, I remember one of the actors, I think, is even, he was, he was pretty decent you know movie actor at the time hmm. was one of like the main guys and the uh the vis- they even did like visual effects uh by foundation imaging the guys who did babylon 5 huh uh so but the thing is like it takes itself so seriously that it's like as good as the production values are it just kind of comes off as you know you know uh mid 90s f F&B mm-hmm. cheese so um, they really would have benefited like what Crystal did with uh, Crystal Dynamics did with Offworld Interceptor where they they basically gone through the full you know shoot for all these uh, FMV intros and realized oh god this is too serious so they put the little MST guys oh, yeah, on the it. two guys yeah <laughs> it's the pseudo MST guys <laughs> I remember that it was like way to save your production uh, footage guys <laughs> You know, they, I'm pretty sure that, that that came out like after they'd they'd seen like that that was gonna be you know they were gonna be ridiculed for is after all like the you know Hollywood is taking over the game industry you know? rocket science games and you know the legend of Lodestar and Cadillacs and dinosaurs and you know all those basically they're just you know Sega CD FMV games and stuff. Now, if you want to talk about weird uh, high concept ideas that never saw the light of day, uh, Doolin Fireman. Well, these saw the light of day. Yeah, I know about Dueling Firemen. That always, that's always brought up as the great unreleased 3DO title. Uh, did you ever play the thing? Or? No, uh, I don't think I don't think it ever um, existed in playable form. I think all they had were just like demos. I've seen YouTube videos which look like it could have been playable in some form. If somebody is out there, it's like yeah. Again, before the proliferation of World Wide Web and and video, video torrent sites, sites yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to like walk out with a copy of an ISO unless you physically had a disc from a company you worked yeah. for. And then, hey, if it's an if it's a CDR disc, I hope you copied it within five years because it's likely not readable anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty-five. Okay. Oh, hello, guys. Yeah, was that when I was recovering some of the M2 stuff in oh. mm-hmm. future video? Uh, <laughs> from a hard drive, I just got uh, to it just in time because oh, well, really? I, I it was found at the back of the closet like, hey, where'd this come from? And it's sort of like, hey, I remember this guy. And I, some of the data was gone. Um, it was just like, when it, when it was uh, reading it, it was mm-hmm. like, nope, sorry. Corrupted. I'm like, oh, what was that? What did I miss? But a lot of it, luckily I had a lot of redundant copies of stuff mm-hmm. on there. So I think I got most of it. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's sad when you realize, you know, it's like, hey, those CDRs, they do not last forever. Yeah, they don't. Reminds me, every time I go home for Christmas, it's like, do, I, do we have anything on a DVD-R or a CDR? Yeah, so let's copy that onto something else. Any flash memory? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll copy now onto, like, a, uh, a RAID mm-hmm. network storage device, you know, it's like, okay. At some point, I've got to back up the backup device. And <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's right. But luckily, they just keep getting cheaper. <laughs> and bigger. Yes. And hopefully more redundant. It's like what? Yeah, it's just like, 
we this was like okay i need the gigabyte drive why do you need the gigabyte drive so that i can master a disc <laughs> so I had to borrow the gigabyte drive so you could master a disc and then you took it over to the burner and then couldn't bump the table for the next hour while it burnt the disc oh yeah i mean one of i think some of the m2 stuff i had was on cyquest discs oh god good luck with that um i actually luckily i found uh a drive for like oh. dirt cheap and then, then the real trick was, oh, we want a certain type of SCSI 2 interface. Uh, that I can help you with. Yeah, okay. Well, no, I had, then I had to find a card. Then I had mm -hmm. to find a PC that would take a SCSI, I think this was the, I don't know if this was an ISA or an original PCI card. Uh -huh. uh, and then I was just like, okay, anything have drivers for this? It's like, luckily, there's a lot of, I've, I've since found there's like a lot of, probably harder to find now but there used to be like you know IDE to USB and then hmm. SCSI to USB little adapters that people have made and there's since discontinued yeah there's there's um yeah, no I was a SCSI bigot for a very long time um because that worked on the Amiga um and it was it was pretty damn fast yeah. um uh, but uh yeah so it, it turns yeah, out there was IDE in the 3000 wasn't there no I remember having an IDE drive and only had two of Migas, so it had, and so I know I had SCSI on my old 2000, so I thought the 3000 no, the, the 3000 had, had The 3000 had built-in SCSI. Yeah. There's, there's definitely Amigas with... The uh, 600, I believe, had built-in IDE. Oh, yes, that was actually, oh, that's right, because that was part of the, the same chip, the Akiko or whatever, that also did the chunky to planar, sort of like, let's, sort of like the flotsam and jetsam uh, functions <laughs> on the chip. So it was kind of like, hey, let's add that. But yeah, because they want cheaper... Well, cheaper hard drive access. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get the hard drive. Well, at that time, um, the price differential between SCSI and IDE was not that much. It was like 5 or $10 per drive. Um, and then it was you know, about the, I uh, can't remember when it was, about the, uh, the mid-90s or the early 90s, where suddenly IDE just started, prices just went through the floor, and SCSI never, never could keep up. Uh, and I tried, I tried keeping... Uh, Keeping a SCSI purity, but it was just got too expensive. Yeah. Yes. So, all the, all the Mac owners out there with uh, FireWire drives are starting to know how, the, how this is feeling <laughs> as that uh, quickly dies out. And, and uh, just remember that when you're clinging to Thunderbolt, you know, <laughs> it's like uh, maybe the new hotness, but uh, if it doesn't start with a U and end with a B. Uh, <laughs> going to be hard for uh, it to end up in every freaking cell phone. <laughs> is that door closed? Yes, it is. I'm not going to bother with it because I know where it but, is. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking like the number of prototypes that have been probably lost to, uh, somebody had one CDR copy of the thing. And... I almost couldn't read my CDR copy of the original assets. Ah, I'll um, see. I hope you copied that as soon as you were able it's, to. It's, it's all on my laptop at this point, but, um, Oh yeah, that's 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 never gonna go down, or yeah, and I back up my laptop or reformat a, itself on a, on a semi regular basis. Yeah, yes. Um, but uh, no, the um, the uh, the the problem I had was I had created the CDR on a Mac, and then years later I mounted it on my Linux laptop, and it worked. And I went, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Then, more recently, when I started to put these together, I said, oh, where's that disk? And first of all, it took me a long time to find the disk. Uh, and then when I finally found it, and yes, that's pretty much what I thought it was. Um, the way for thin. <laughs> I finally found it and uh, put it back in, and it says, I tried to mount it, and it says, oh, uh, block size mismatch. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> I went, what? What are you talking about, block size mismatch? Only you had an Amiga, you could read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like what happened was. Can I get a mat? Maybe I can. Just go this way. Any of these maps ever spell out anything? Like in the walls, no, just for fun? No, no, Sorry. <laughs> if you can read this, you're anal retentive and have covered every block. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, so, so, so the block size mismatch because um, apparently 2K blocks. Couldn't couldn't it, 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 2K blocks are what's standard on CDRs now, but apparently the old Max didn't master that way. So uh, there it is. Um, well, you, you just need some non-commercial right. 
CDR software because you know all the Euro uh, coders love to uh, well to fill what up I, the disk with the non-standard size. What I did so. to quote unquote fix it was I uh, copied the block image to the hard drive, and then using the loopback device mounted it uh, off the file system, and it said, "Oh, sure, no problem." You know, because files don't care what right. the block size is. Right, right. So that's how I was able to to uh, get it get it all this stuff again. And I was able to do that with the, the uh, portfolio CDs as well. Yeah. How do I get out of here? Uh, I'll just keep going this way. Yeah, it's gonna, like all the M2 stuff I recorded was like it was on a cost, a cost across a couple drives, and it's like it doesn't even come close to filling up an SD card I have. Right. You know, and it's like it's thinking it's like God, imagine misplacing like a micro SD card with like your your work from <laughs> thirty two gigs of yeah. photos. I was just whatever. thinking it's like I should put this on a, a micro SD card. And like have it surgically embedded somewhere. <laughs> I, I will never lose it. It's like, <laughs> right. Maybe maybe put it next time I go to the dentist. Like, hey, if you're gonna fill anything, could you just kind of add this little thing to the mix? You know, I think it's I think it's safe. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh gee, I wonder what's in here. <laughs> um, you want to make for the health person? Nothing so far. Mm-hmm. Well, your heart yeah. is beating kind of fast. So no, 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 no. That's that's the soundtrack. Yes. Okay. Seventy-four. There you go. Ninety-four. All right. Uh, Thirty. Gee, I can't help but notice the slight bit of alpha channel around those guys. Is that early anti-aliasing? Yes, it is. There you go. Yes, yes. it is. Um, Blending to the background. Right. That's take I, note. I haven't. Um, yeah, I haven't actually written. I'm get, I haven't gotten around to coding that into my plugin yet. Um, because the the math box that they had in the uh, 3DO kind of complicated. Um, you could combine two sources uh, with a very restricted math formula to get trans uh, get, get transparent colors, or you could have it operate. You know, basically use the cell again as the second source. So oh. 94, 90. Ha, ah, okay. Oh, three doors. Ha, ha, ha. How many keys do I have? Seven. Hmm, do I burn three keys? Um, so, yeah, so I'm, uh, hopefully I'll have all that um, in the, the plug-in. Hmm. Uh, this is where I got uh, screwed before. Yeah. Four guys all in there? They're ghosts. They didn't think they got the same volume. <laughs> I'm just wondering how they all how how they just all magically collected in that one area. Uh, probably where they were dropped by the level designer. <laughs> yeah, but they move they, they do move around. I mean, as you observed uh, in a previous episode, they chase you forever, so I'm just wondering Yeah. You can only have one but, I mean if they get into a corner like that, how are they gonna get out? If they, they come towards you, or they just ran. Are they like Pac-Man ghosts? They just wander around. Or? No, they don't wander around. They, yeah. they, 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 they follow you no matter where you are, because they're ghosts. They can, they, they know where you are all the time. Oh, hello, guys. I see you. Okay. <laughs> So you really can't complain about like how unfair the game is when you, you know you yeah, worked I'm... on it. It's literally <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, anybody else? So did you read any reviews of this game when it came out, or were no, you just like, no, I, I don't want to know. I want to just cover my eyes and not. Um, at the time, I didn't know. I mean, there was <laughs> that was not actually a magazine. That was something I made up. There was never a 3D World magazine. Um, there was a 3DO magazine. There was a 3DO magazine, but there was not a 3DO World magazine. Okay. Yeah, there was PC World, Amiga World, but there wasn't a 3DO World. Um, What's in the name? And I, I, made, I made that up. Okay. Um, as part of a, a game, a joke, <laughs> a long time ago. Oh. Uh, Is this like the awards of the thing? It's like Publisher's Choice Award or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, we just gave ourselves an award. <laughs> Well, that was like Perfect. the what was that was like one of the jokes in uh, the Kool Aid Man game. The Kool Aid Man. Game? Yeah, there was a well, that, that was like one of the licenses I think that Mattel had for some bizarre reason, 
And so it had won some award. They, they give some magazine called it like, you know, worst use of a license ever. And so then the marketing department always referred to it as, hey, that's the award winning Kool Aid Man game. <laughs> it's like, look, we got an award. <laughs> I heard about that one. It's like, an award's an award, goddammit. You know, it's like, we will take it. It's. <laughs> Uh, I think we I think we explored this ground uh, during my when I died the last time. Did you pick up that key? Which key? Well, you had a key. Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was in that that okay. niche there. Yeah, I picked that one up. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. So yeah, so I want to get the uh, GIMP plugin. Um, reading, doing all the, uh, attempting to do the special effects in in a way that makes sense inside uh, the GIMP. Ah, oh, damn it, I'm going to lose two. Well, gee, there's a lot of ammo in here. I wonder why. why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Are we? Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, we're in um, we're in the exit again. Yeah. All right. So we'll just not open that door at the end. We'll just pick up all the all the goodies. You can't buy swag with them, dude. I mean, it's just like you really need to. It would be it would be nice if you could like cash out for shots or health or something, but no. Uh, and you asked earlier, um, why bother with points at all? Yes. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, so, why lives? So, yeah. uh, oh, well, because well, so points give you extra lives. Points give you extra lives, uh, but then points can also tell you how well you did against your younger brother. Or, you know. Oh, I, okay, I, Yeah, okay. So I, give, I get that. I get that. Or my nephew, in my case, was being soccer kid. Mm -hmm. um, ah. <laughs> Because every time I go home, I still have to check my, my parents' 3 do to see if like he's beaten my score yet. He keeps trying. <laughs> Um, oh, so he's improving. Oh, yeah. It's like whenever he visits, it's like, where's the 3D? It's like, it's like I don't know. My mom's like, I don't know if that'll work with the, the 65 inch 3D set. Or it's like, Mom, trust me, it works. No. <laughs> yeah, Pro now, that, now, see, yeah, that, the 65 inch 3D set. And we're, I wonder what it would be like turn 3D on, the 3D auto 3D mode. It's like, actually, this type of game would actually work well with the auto 3D mode on most TVs because uh. it actually. Makes the TVs make the assumption that would be valid for this, which is like you know, it's closer towards the sides and the center is probably mm -hmm. where you're looking and all that, yeah. Wherever yeah, the yeah. edges are, probably walls, you know, that kind of thing. So, that would probably this game would definitely on a 65 inch 3D set would probably make you very ill. <laughs> yeah, if you were sitting, yeah, if you were sitting close enough to it, okay, where am I? Oh, yeah, if you're uh. Wrap in your peripheral vision there, sure. Heck, even without the 3D, you're probably. 3D would just add that much more to it. I'm trapped. I wonder if. Um, Claustrophobia. Do, do, do modern sets with to generate the soap opera effect, do they use the uh, motion vectors to do that, or can they just infer it from the. Yeah, they're trying to. Still frames. They're trying, I mean. They're basically doing the same thing like that, you know, MPEG encoding is doing, where it's like, okay, compare these frames, figure out where the pixels are going, see if we can put, you know, a few things there. But of course, they they generally don't want to do more than a couple frames at a time in terms of like trying to figure out before and after. Mm -hmm. So things have things unfortunately have like a really weird inertia because it's like, well, if, you know, if you're only dealing with two or three frames. It can often guess wrong, you know, in terms of like where the motion vector is going. So everything kind of has like, you know, trails, you know, it's like something stops suddenly, it wants to, you know, mm -hmm. probably try and keep going for like <laughs> another frame or two. Where are we? 30 and 38. It's, yeah, it, you know. I, I always love how people like complain, it's like, this TV doesn't have all this doesn't have all these extra motion options so like well, what are you going to do first thing and first thing everybody does is turn them off you know right it's like it looks like it's like okay not good for movies because you know why would you want to add frames that weren't there in the movie mm -hmm. which also like why is that you know people are bitching about the hobbits it's like well i don't want it to look like my tv it's like it's not gonna look like your damn tv because your your tv is trying to guess something on the fly that you know 
you know, at least was there when they actually shot the movie. It's sort of mm-hmm. like, you know, because a lot of people's like their TVs do do the the 3D, mm-hmm. you know, effect. It'll try and guess it. And you ever watch it, it's sort of like, you know, okay, but a lot of times it just guesses wrong. It's like, you know, it'll, uh, somebody will, somebody's head will come up and they'll suddenly where their hair is will be, you know, an indentation because it decided that the hair is farther back than the rest of him. And mm-hmm. it's like, and it's like, have you ever done that? And if you know your, t- it's like if you wouldn't trust your TV to do 3D, mm-hmm. or you wouldn't trust your TV to colorize a movie for you, right? You know, you know, but you would probably have no problem seeing, like, say, the Avengers, which was converted 3D, you know, oh, Lord. or which, or something like Avatar, which was shot natively 3D. So it's like, so why do you think the Hobbit's going to be bad when it was natively shot, you know, 40 frames a second? You know, mm-hmm. it's like, yes, just because your TV can't figure it out in, you know, a fifteenth of a second with a $2 chip that is inside the damn yeah. thing. I think they're going to do, a, you know, not as good a job as, you know, Peter Jackson with a $50,000 camera, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> shooting this thing. You know, and a professional, you know, cinematographer and, you right, know, a right, year right. post-production. That they're yes. going to say, oh my God, it looks like the soap opera effect. They're not going to suddenly find this out like the day before the movie comes out. <laughs> what were we thinking? You know? So, Yeah. The, the whole idea of like you know ah, I'm worried about the, so the other thing is that people don't realize it's like yes you you already have native high you've already seen native high frame content in your life it's called video games mm-hmm. that are running at 60 frames a second or sporting events that right. are running at 60 frames a second or if you have a PC you know 120 frames a second mm-hmm. and people think oh that looks awesome that looks great I've you know they've, they've seen their buddies this is why people buy expensive rigs in games like Crisis you know mm-hmm. it's like because yes, if you have a high refresh rate monitor and a high spec system, it looks incredible. So, okay, yeah. Keys, right. So we're gonna go back this way. This is, so, yeah, this is a high play value level. Or, this is just, know, or like people, like what's the first thing people watch HD on their brand new set? Sports. Not me. Well, okay, because well, okay, Ren fairs. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, first, first, uh, first thing I saw uh, high def on this set was Tron. Okay, well, really? Yeah. Okay, high def on the set. Really? Yeah, you've had the set a lot longer than Tron has been on Blu-ray. Um, I well, I put in a DVD copy, and I thought that was good enough. Oh, okay. Well, I should I should loan you my <laughs> Blu-ray copy of Tron sometime. Uh, okay, I can get there this way. That's a good that's a good movie that takes advantage of HD because yes, it was shot not, on seventy millimeter. So yeah, not 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 Tron. Legacy. Legacy Tron. I, oh, I oh you want to have that discussion? Do you have, did you have a problem with Tron Legacy? I, you know, it just wasn't, it just didn't really do it for me. I mean, it's, I mean, it was a perfectly serviceable movie, but it, I think it's a great setup to another movie. Uh huh. As in, okay, we have to bring it into current gen technology, and like, mm-hmm. how do you explain, you know, going from Tron to, you know, the World Wide Web Tron? Uh-huh. And this was sort of like that bridge movie where it's like, okay, this is how we take this mythology and then move it into, you know, what's coming forward. So it's like, when, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to a sequel. Hopefully they won't get all shy after John Carter uh, about making ex- big, expensive, you know, movies like that. Well, how well did um, Tron Legacy do? Uh, apparently it did enough. Uh-huh. I mean, the first Tron member did not... Right. It barely made back its budget mm-hmm. because, you know, hey, it came out the summer's E.T., e- you know, sucks mm-hmm. to be you. Uh, <laughs> somebody said it's like, they, were, they said that, that summer was like the best geek summer ever uh-huh. in terms of movies that came out, but none of them made money except E.T. It was like, you know, they either broke even or, but none of them did like the bank, you know, blockbuster, except maybe like Star Trek 2 would be the exception of that. Mm. But like Dark Crystal didn't really do that well. Uh, Blade Runner did not do that well. Huh. Um, but these are all movies that everybody says, oh my God, these are cultural you know, events. Of the same. It's like, yes, but they were considered box office flops at the time. Yeah. Because they came out the same summer as E.T. Secret and Nim, same, same thing. Yeah. Uh, it was just like, uh, just that, you know. It's just like that was the summer where everybody we're said, gonna be busy here. In a so moment. it's like, wow, look at all these great movies. It's like, oh, go see. You want to go see it? Yeah, I'll go see E.T. again. You know, it's just like, or it's more the case of like, okay, what can what can everybody see mm-hmm. in the family? E.T. You yeah. know, it's like mom does not want to see Blade Runner. No, mom does not. Pro- you know, dad probably does not want to see Secret of Them. Uh, you right. know, it's like you know, E.T. You know, hey, 
Alien gets drunk, says penis breath, that can relate. You know? <laughs> so. But yeah, it's uh, but Tron Legacy. I thought was it certainly made more money than the the original Tron did. I mean, it's well, like, I mean, given you know, no, inflation even gets even us given all. given even given inflation, it made more money. Okay, yeah. where's the rest? Where, how do we get in here? <coughs> the other thing, I don't know if you get uh, Disney uh, XD. Good. I don't know what you have Comcast. Oh. Yeah, we have Comcast. Okay. Uh, I still don't know if you get Disney XD. I don't know if that's part of the digital. But anyway, they have uh, the animated Tron Legacy. Not Tron Legacy, but it takes place between Tron and Tron Legacy. Oh. And Bruce Boxleitner, you know, is playing Tron. Mm-hmm. Uh, Good. Uh, and I think it's, I'm going to say it's Elijah Wood plays the the main character. Uh, uh, Flynn? No, nah, no, not Flynn. Uh, basically, it's like, it's a new character. It's sort of like, it's kind of like it's almost like Batman Beyond, and the fact you know that Tron is trying to recruit a new Tron, you know, ah. to take his place because he's been corrupted or whatever. I see. It's like I said, it takes place between the two movies, so it's this is sort of like the beginning of like how he gets corrupt. Yeah, spoiler alert! Uh, if you haven't seen Tron Legacy, uh, I did play Tron the video game. I thought it was pretty. Tron, which one? The Legacy game? Tron Legacy game? No, the original Tron video game. Well, okay. So Tron, that's two point, Tron 2.0, it's called. Oh, okay. That's not the original. There's the arcade games. Oh, that. I'm There's sorry. There's no. a couple home video games. Mm-hmm. Then there was the first-person shooter Tron 2.0. Awesome mm-hmm. game. That would have made a great movie. Because, uh, uh, But it doesn't actually star Jeff Bridges. I think the fact that no, Tron... No, but it did have Bruce Bo- Boxleitner yes, in there. Yeah. As Tron. Yeah. Uh, as And as uh, Brad Allen. Yeah. Allen. Yeah. So, yeah, and that would have, and, and trust me, that's probably the movie they, I think it, that actually is the movie they kind of started out making originally, back when they couldn't get Jeff Bridges, hmm. and they were trying to, and that, I think that was also around the time Pixar was trying to get involved in that, and they were whole falling out with Disney, mm-hmm. and, but once, well, once they kind of shelved that version, and they just made the video game, and, but the license was so popular, then it's like, oh, you know, let's give it to some hot young director, you know, like, well, Lisberger was a first time director when he did Tron. Uh, oh. Somebody said, you know, that was like the biggest show of faith a studio ever had for a director, the fact that, you know, it's a first time director who'd only ever done animation before, you know, uh-huh. Animal Olympics is what he was known for before Tron. Hmm. Uh, and they basically, you know, gave him, I think they, that was probably the most expensive movie Disney had ever made at that point. Possibly. And it's between that and the Black Hole were like the uh, two most expensive movies they'd ever made. Ironically named. Uh, yeah. And then, ha ha. Yeah, sorry. You made it funny. Yeah, it's like, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Now you got the... I've got the thing, so now i got to go back. I'm thinking we, I'm not going to bother exploring the rest of this because that way madness lays. So, how, could, all right, for, how many keys do I have? I have three. Um, so... How many doors between you? And right. It's, and what's, the, what's the fastest way? Are you full on health and shots? Because you want the boss. I'm. Can I'm, you run past the boss, or you have to kill him? You can run past him. I mean, you can get to it's the you get to the to exit. Do. It's a well. It's a, I mean, because he's in the way. Right. Um, but. Uh, right. It's got closed doors on ghosts. So so. Turn. All right. So like turn there. this way. Of course, they're ghosts. They should just be able to face through the doors. And then go <laughs> this way. So yeah. Now see if you could close the doors. Yeah. Uh, you can actually. What? You can't close. Oh, doors. hi there. You can't close doors in this game. Yeah, sure you can. you can. Oh, it really? Yeah. Does it actually does that block the ghosts? Yeah, it does. Oh. I just. Never I never the, did that. I've never. Uh, I, I just never had the presence of mind to do it. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> so it just remembers they're locked in a lock state, but you can open and close doors. That's correct. Huh. Of course, that probably yeah. makes it harder because then you don't know if it's an unlocked door, and then you might waste a key on yeah, it or exactly. something. Exactly. Well, it's, yeah, it's because it's like yeah, because that's an interesting feature, and I I don't know if it just I'd forgotten that or if I never used it or never occurred to me like why would you why would you close a door you could open <laughs> other than to block the ghost in there it's like open the door it's like nope not going in there it's like, <laughs> <laughs> gonna close that off thank you very much yeah that's an option uh, huh. So, well, see, we're, all, we're like, what, four videos into this and we learned something <laughs> new that I had never known or at least forgotten. You can close the doors. All right, so, so I'm spending way too much time trying to figure this out. Yes. Uh, 
Okay, so. It's like the, uh, the Monty Python. Okay, and just Holy to prove you know, it. Get to, on with it. Yes. <laughs> and, just, and just to prove the point. Ah. There you ah. go. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Yeah, Wolfenstein. I bet you selected the opening and closed door. <laughs> Doom. You could not open it. You couldn't close the door once it opened. You could. It, they close automatically. Whoa. That's also for visibility reasons. Where's know. this? <laughs> well, you got a lot of shots. I got a lot of shots. Two key shots. So why are you all hogs of key? There's one key. Well, and this guy. And in, in, in. Oh, no, he's not. He's in the other hallway. All right, we just won't go there. Because that's not what I'm looking for. He's going to work his way around to you. All right, so... I have this cache of... Pick up the shots. What are you doing? No, um, because I've got the boss that I want to kill first. Okay. In the... Uh, as soon as I can figure out... Okay, so down, around. Yeah, because that'll take ten shots. Then I'll pick these up. And... You know, I think the only thing worse playing with another game player... Oh. Is playing with a, another person who works on video games. <laughs> 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 because... Is this the right one? It's it's like it's worse than you know the backseat driver is like yeah you know I would have done this. Uh, <laughs> I've actually noticed that have you ever have you ever played a game, a, a third per, a third party's game, with a group of game designers? No, I have not. <laughs> if it's if you ever liked games, you probably you it's it's not very fun because they they're they're always picking apart mm -hmm. you know the stuff they see and it's like oh look at that cheat that's a reuse of that sound effect. Or something, you know. It's mm. like, oh, listen to that. That's that's only a mono sound. They can afford to do full spatial, you know. Just and you know, or oh, look at the the graphic tearing on that. You know, it's like, oh, look how low res that is. We could do way better than that. So basically, <laughs> they will. They cannot be. It's very hard for a lot of the game designers to like be like be, be objective, objective about like you know, because I've I've watched other game developers. Play mm -hmm. things like Splinter Cell. It's like, oh, what's this piece of crap? They'll never sell. And I'm just looking. It's like, are you nuts? This is a fun game. But they're like, you know, but they'll pick apart just the individual pieces of it. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can find fault. But I guess average people, okay, do it. Average people tend to forgive. Okay. And now here's less. Have you spent much time collecting coins and jewels? Far too much. Do they make you feel rich? Enjoy your newfound wealth. Soon it may adorn your grave. Several times already, in fact. It's yeah, it's like he's reading your diary, man. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it's uh, a little scary how that replies to you. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh Phew. Alright, how long have we been yakking? Well let's see, two playthroughs of the uh, well, one one and a half, one okay. and three quarters, but yeah, it's another fifty minutes. Oh well. Ah uh, uh, yes. What, what were we just talking? We might about? have to. Well, as I was saying, like playing games with uh, actual developers. Oh I, right. I, yeah. I wonder if movies are the same way. Like if they get around, like going, it's like, oh look at that. You can totally see they they cross the line and the camera move there. Or, you know, it's like mm -hmm. oh you can see the reflection in the guy's glasses. You know, something that people don't know. And it's like it, it is kind of true. Mm -hmm. I have I have my theory that it's the un, sort of like you know the theory of the uncanny valley, mm -hmm. where uh, you know it's like there's just a certain threshold people just won't accept crossing in terms of like things looking realistic or looking human and then being grossed out by it like you know uh, you know in computer graphics or in, in movies and stuff where it's like you know uh, like people are creeped out by the Polar Express for instance <laughs> because it it's like it looks very close to being human but it's just not quite there enough. So people think, ah, zombie, you know. But it's kind of the same thing. I kind of think there's this kind of like a similar thing in, in games, but inverted for what I call, I call it like the inverse Metacritic Valley, which is <laughs> there's a, and it's sort of like, there's a certain point at which if you can get over a certain threshold in the game, mm -hmm. they will forgive almost any jank. Hmm. But if you can't get over that initial threshold, mm -hmm. It's like you're suddenly going to just fall back down to its total crap fill. So it's sort of, I, this is my theory of like, there's why on Metacritic, there's like, there seems to be just a, a ton of games that are like 90 plus. Mm -hmm. And, but there's very few that are like in the mid 80s. Hmm. And then there's just a ton that are in like the low 70s down to like the 60s and stuff, where it's just sort of like, interesting. If you don't get over that initial hump, you mm -hmm. start to nitpick at every single thing you see. Game developers never can get over that hump with anybody else's game. Uh huh. 
But amazingly, a lot are blind to their own games in terms mm-hmm. of like, you know, where they'll think it's like, because well, they sort of like do the inverse of it where it's sort of like, but we're doing this. But we're hiding, you know, you know, you can go anywhere in this game at once. It's like, it doesn't matter if you can only, you know, walk, you know, 10 miles an hour. It's right. just like that. It's like, totally. it's great that you have continuous streaming, but if you got to, you know, if you force the player to wait at every door that you open... Uh, they're not going to give you credit for it's like look there are no load screens in the game it's like well great you're staring at a you know frozen uh, well yeah you're, geometry you, you know you have this artificial thing where suddenly it's like you know what was the one they did in Harry Potter which I just laughed my ass off at I mean it's clever and it probably fools a few people but it's like oh the paintings so in, the oh, Harry, yeah. in one of the Harry Potter games, I, mm-hmm. I just thought this was so funny. You walk up to a painting, mm-hmm. and because the painting is basically a teleporter to somewhere else in the game, right? You know, because it's this non-Euclidean geometry, right? Where it's right. like, mm-hmm. you know, what's behind it is not actually there. Although a lot of times it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, but because they're loading in that whole section, uh-huh. <laughs> they will say password, please, uh-huh. and then you know. The player will say their line. All this time is loading all this stuff in crazily behind the scene, <laughs> and then it comes in, and sometimes they go, hmm, "Let me think about that." You know? <laughs> but there's one place they couldn't do it, which was like you're going down to Hagrid's place, mm-hmm. and there's this long bridge, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And if you run full speed, mm-hmm. um, you can get there before it can actually load in that huge section of geometry. Mm. And there's a few other places like the Owlries too. So, so what they did was, and I thought, okay, I'll give you points for cleverness on this. If they're having trouble keeping up with the streaming, mm-hmm. Harry gets out of breath and just stops running. And he starts going, oh, oh, you know. So, <laughs> because it's not, it's, it's pretty much sort of in the same place every time, in the same mm-hmm. physical place in the world. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how long you, but you can run the entire, all around the courtyard in right. circle. He'll never run out of breath. You get to this one spot, you run, suddenly it's like, I'm out of breath. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick, you know. <laughs> Give me the oxygen. Oh. But it's like, yeah, it's a good way. It's a good way to hide the load times. It works for some people, but you know, other people are just like, just put a load screen there. It's like, <laughs> so should I talk about that now or save it for next time? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Through your right. experience. Yes. Yeah, so I've been I've been teasing this for at least three episodes now. But the game starts and you see this piece of artwork, and I'll key it in and post for you here. And it says a 3DO experience from Electronic Arts. Um. So this had a weird. I mean, we're in the middle of doing the game and we're wrapping it. We're trying to get it done. It's sort of like trying to put the finished, you know, like play test as much as we can, you know, make sure it's not crashing, make sure things aren't exploding. And suddenly this requirement shows up from 3DO marketing. It's just like, we have, we, we want to, we have this branding campaign that we want to do. Oh, and we just have the game say a 3DO experience. Oh, I can tell where this came from immediately. That was, that was like the summer of, the last two summers before this were like THX. The audience is listening. Something that whole like branding, and something like a that. Dolby Digital Experience, you know that kind of thing. So yeah, it was very much in that vein. So it's just like a 3D experience, and so it had to. And so they said the the marketing people said the splash screen or the opening screen has to say a 3D experience. And I said where, how, in what context? And he's just like, no, it just has to say that somewhere. You figure it out. And I went, what? And so they, and so they said, so you have to put it in there. So I said, for, for like for the first time, I sort of ignored it. You know, it's like, I mean, the art is done. We couldn't do the, hmm. we weren't about to, I wasn't about to hand, go back to the artist and say, could you chisel into the stone on the opening screen, a 3D experience? And he kind of went, no, we don't want to do that. And so, so I kind of ignored it. And then the, the came back says, you know, it didn't say 3D experience. And so I said, fine. And so I actually painted this myself. Oh. I went and got um, a copy of the license logo. And I think that's the Palatino font. I think I did this on an Amiga. And huh? <laughs> typed this up, converted it over, plugged it in, and... Did wrote... you use Deluxe Paint? That'd be I think, ironic. I, I think I used Deluxe Paint. I might have used... Yeah, it's just... I'd have to check to make sure... The three D O the logo looks a little too good for thirty two colors, but so but that's not the actual screen, right? Because that's not title safe. Is no, this it? is no, this is the cell. Okay, this yeah. is the cell data. Um, it's like the S looks cut off. Um, no, it's actually there. Are you sure, it looks like one pixel is missing on the right side. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah it's a, but <laughs> okay. No, so this is what shows up on the screen exactly okay. what is painted right. on the screen. Um, and so 
I, I put this together and put it and threw it on the disk and I named the file after the person who made me do it. The name of the file is Lori Probst made me use this. <laughs> uh, so okay. <laughs> so that's what that that's what that's all about. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Lori and, made me and, do this. and the denouement for this is like three or four months later the requirement was dropped. Hmm. I've seen this on other games though. You uh, from that era. From, from, from that era, you saw that, but it I mean, I've never a, seen a, a 3D experience from it's, it's Crystal not, Dynamics or anything like that. Exactly, you didn't see it because they, I mean, they were done at that point, so they kind of went. I mean, it also probably helps that uh, Probst, uh, yeah. Probst is a uh, Larry Probst was at EA and uh -huh. Larry Probst, yeah. I don't, so, I, well, I don't know if Lori Probst was married to him or not, or just a coincidence. Well, or, or it'd be an awful coincidence if there was somebody named. Two people named Probst. Uh huh. <laughs> Unless it's just, it's his sister or something like that. <laughs> so, so that's what I've been teasing for the last three episodes. Uh, thank you all for joining us for this episode, and we'll see you all next time.